We're gonna put a red light up there so we know when we're recording. Go. Go on recording. Well, good morning. We will call this uh, commissioner hearing to order. Uh, the purpose of this hearing uh, is to consider the resolution of intent 24-25 to impose a special levy and borrow money. Uh, this is an action item. So at the end of the hearing, the commissioners will either uh, move the resolution of intent forward, uh, table it, or take no act which would effectively kill the resolution of intent. So a little bit of uh, history behind the resolution of intent. This uh, resolution has to do with financing the annex that we're building across the street and also the jail yard, which is right here on the west side of the courthouse. Both of them are in the initial stages of construction and both of them are uh, related to each other. So the commissioners began discussion of an annex, uh, an additional space for the courthouse. Um, I don't know how many years ago was it? Yeah. At oh, least, okay. at least, yeah. Uh, we have looked at many different options. Uh, we've looked at adding on to the courthouse itself with more office space, um, more detention beds. Uh, we put a levy to the voters to construct a new detention center, and that levy was uh, soundly defeated. So we have, again, for several years, been trying to figure out a path forward that we could afford and would um, meet the needs or requirements that we felt we needed to address. So uh, we were, the county was involved in a lawsuit that was filed by uh, numerous inmates that were down in the detention center several years ago, probably three years ago. Um, the lawsuit had a lot of frivolous complaints, but it also had some other complaints that we knew needed to be addressed. So um, in the settlement agreement that the county reached in this lawsuit, and I think Katie is going to pull it up here on the screen. After several months of negotiation uh, with the legal team from the inmates who had brought the lawsuit and the commissioners, we agreed to this settlement. And in this settlement, a couple of things related to this hearing is um, an outdoor recreation area. There is an indoor recreation presently uh, downstairs in the detention center, but uh, on many occasions that is used to house inmates because we are over capacity. So that indoor recreation area is not always available for the inmates to use. And so part of their complaint was that they were denied recreation. And so that needed to be addressed. Um, another issue was just the overcrowding. We have typically more inmates than the facility is supposed to handle. Uh, we have been at less than capacity for a few days now, though. But anyhow, in the settlement, the county agreed to construct an outdoor recreation area. 
and also to provide more beds to relieve the overcrowding. So the outdoor recreation area uh, came in at a price tag of just right at $1 million. And uh, again, its uh, initial construction has begun. In order to provide more space, more beds, um, the commissioners decided that the approach we would like to take is to was to move some of the county offices that are were in the basement, specifically elections, needed more space uh, and also uh, handicap accessibility to the elections office was not good. So we the new annex, the first floor of the annex will house the elections and a community room that can be used by elections as kind of an overflow area if necessary. Uh, the other offices that are going to be moved are going to be the IT department, um, planning, environmental health, uh, superintendent of schools office, uh, and GIS. Is that it? Yep. So anyhow, the two uh, construction uh, items that we're involved in right now, they they play back to the settlement agreement that we signed and also trying to free up or create some more space for county offices. So this is the settlement agreement that uh, the commissioners agreed to. Uh, there were some discussion among the commissioners of whether or not to accept this settlement agreement. Uh, the, uh, the alternative to not accepting it was going to be more legal costs and also potentially go to trial. And uh, I guess in our opinion, we felt that this was um, the cheapest and the most logical way for the commissioners to move forward. So I think, Katie, if you scroll down, it might. Um, so here's the piece that um where we agreed to construct the outdoor uh, recreation area and uh i don't know if there's in the settlement agreement if it uh, speaks to the annex being used to create more more bed space but it's so that's kind of the background um, I'm going to open it up to any discussion uh, by the commissioners or comments by the commissioners. I guess I just add a uh, when it comes to expansion by moving out the elections, one issue we have downstairs is classification of inmates, and we're getting a lot more women inmates than we used to have. And so elections would, uh, from preliminary we had an engineer look at it, an architect, and preliminarily thought we could get like 12 to 15 misdemeanor beds in that area. And uh, indoor exercise could be used for additional women's space or moving people around, things like that. Uh, so it would be, um, we'd be able to add quite a few at a very reasonable cost. When you compare the levy we tried to pass for a new jail facility, over a 20 year period would have amounted to about 50, 50 million dollars. And we're looking at doing some things for, uh, I don't know what to work out to around $4 million or something like that, that will take care of what we need to. Uh, that's a huge savings to the taxpayers. And it's something that we put a lot of discussion into. We're trying to be very frugal, uh, get by just as cheap as we can do it. And I think this is a good solution. 
I don't have a comment. <clears throat> Another issue that we have down in the detention center uh, is trying to do maintenance down there. We have, we don't really always have an area where we can move inmates from a certain cell block so that we can go into that cell block and do maintenance because uh, the recreation areas uh, being used to house additional inmates. So we're hoping the outdoor recreation area is going to uh, relieve that pressure of not being able to uh, move inmates around some so we can do um, maintenance and also, as Commissioner Baird said, provide more space for classification. We'll be able to better segregate the classifications of prisoners. Well, a safety concern is by having this, we'll be able to use, we'll be able to move a whole pod out into this exercise area. And then detention officers will be able to go in and do searches, sell searches, go through things, look for contraband, look for weapons they might have made and different things like that. And that's not done nearly enough now just because we don't have the ability to do it. And it's a it's a huge safety issue um, that we're hoping to help rectify also. So if you haven't uh, had an opportunity to look at the resolution, uh, the resolution is a combination of a special levy, and uh, I guess by a special levy, it it uh, is one that does not have to be voted on. It's a permissive levy uh, that's put on folks' tax statements, and then there's also part of the costs of the annex and the Exercise yard will be paid for by a loan, uh, which will be paid back over a period of three years, I believe. Um, Tara Barry is our chief financial officer. I don't know if you want to comment on the how the levy and the loan work together. Yeah, I totally can. <clears throat> and it's like six million dollars overall. Okay. For for all of the for projects, all of yeah. Um, but right now we are looking at borrowing three point five million, so that we can get. Well, we're already under construction, so we need the cash flow, <laughs> and then we will recoup that over three years. Um, that comes to about one point two seven million per year, um, and that does include the interest expense. So, and um. At our rate last year, the one, $109,000 per mill, um, it's going to be about 11.59 mills. And I actually brought what that would look like for a taxpayer for $100,000, $500,000, and $600,000, if you wanted that. Do you want that information? Sure, yeah. Okay, so at that rate, because we know that that's not going to be the exact number of mills because we don't have our certified values yet. But at last year's rate, um, we're looking at um, fifteen dollars and seventy cents on a hundred thousand dollar house, which mostly doesn't exist in this county anymore, but it's on here anyway. Three hundred thousand dollar house, forty seven dollars and eleven cents, and a six hundred thousand dollar house, which is ninety four dollars and twenty three cents. Just so you know what that would look like. That's what's going three on years. That. That's for three years, and then we'll have to redo this another judgment levy when we do the expansion for the other two million and any other um, more uh, attorney fees that come out of the woodwork, if there's any more. If the value of the mill goes up in our, our next budget cycle, then we would levy fewer mills. Correct, but it's still gonna be the same amount. Yeah. And that finality, all these but mills. We don't have any comment yet, Chris. Oh. I'll open it up to public comment here in a few minutes. And I'll see so it. what we haven't, done is try to put a price on what it's going to cost to remodel the elections and add more detention beds down there so that once we get all the movement done over to the annex and we'll start taking a look at the available space um, 
that has been freed up and there will be obviously some costs associated with renovating the basement to add more detention beds but that is down the road a little ways and that six million dollars that include the ARPA money we put in no that that's just the cost of what i think we will end up charging the judgment levy the taxpayers for this because and i the two million dollars on that's just a placeholder for what we possibly think the jail expansion might be but we have no idea now we did have some arpa money uh to commit to the project well that was to the annex okay yes 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 well, when we talked about expansion into the elections office, the contractor at that time gave us an estimate of around nine hundred and some thousand dollars. I don't know if you were in that position. I, so, no, I wasn't. So yeah. by the time you did that and remodeled the exercise area, indoor one downstairs now, um, I think that's where we came up with the two million, which I think is very adequate. Hopefully it's high. So at this point, we'll open it up to public comment. Please provide your uh, name so we can get it in the record. Uh, Max. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, over on the average year, what percentage of uh, inmates are tribal? You know, uh, Derek Bell, would you like to it, it averages it out about 50%, because sometimes it's 45, sometimes it's... 55 or 60, so it averages 50%. So the cost of this new annex for the jail, what percentage is the tribe contributing? There's no tribal uh, allocation for it. Yeah. So in other words, it's another taxpayer expense going to the, that the tribe doesn't have to pay for. Yeah, they're not contributing uh, to this project. Have you asked them to? Uh, Have the, you went to the tribal council and said, can you guys contribute to this new jail annex or whatever? We've had discussions with uh, council over the annex and, well, not specifically the annex over public law 280 and um, they are not so if willing to contribute to the cost, so if they feel like they're already contributing a significant amount to public law to eighty costs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if PP and L still own own the dam, how much tax revenue would we be getting that from that every year? Um, the <laughs> what the Department of Revenue did with the with the taxes on the former Kerr Dam, they were almost at a million dollars, 900 and some thousand dollars. So then like a year before it went off the tax rolls, uh, they lowered it to like 450,000. And of course we asked Department of Revenue why the taxes were uh, such a dramatic drop. And their response was, uh, we know it's gonna be coming off of the tax rolls, so we wanted the uh, county to start weaning themselves off of those tax dollars, which made absolutely no sense whatsoever. So if that was the Department of Revenue spot. So I ask, what would they be paying now, do you think, right this year, if they still own the dam? How many millions of dollars in taxes? You know, I don't know what the answer to that be. Uh, I heard it would be like $2 million. Is that? Well, the Department of Revenue would do the you know, appraisal and, and fix the. Okay. So how much is the tribe paying on taxes on the dam? Right now it's zero. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. And there's, you know. Yeah, I knew the answers to all those questions. I just wanted to ask them. Yeah, we, um, you know, when it first came off the tax rolls, we sent a letter to the Department of Revenue saying why uh, has it been removed from the tax rolls? And the response was that um, the Department of Revenue had determined a couple years of advance because the sale was impending that at the time 
the tribe took ownership, it would be removed from the tax rolls. And we asked who reached that decision, uh, and the response was it was an administrative decision made by the Department of Revenue. On the election. Any other public comment? Chris? Uh, just to review something simple here, um, you mentioned that it was going to be about a hundred dollars on a three hundred thousand dollar property. Was that what you said? No, six hundred thousand dollars property would be ninety four dollars. Okay. Yeah. So it's about a hundred dollars for six hundred thousand, and it's linear from there on, on upwards. In other words, it goes up at the same rate. So for well, it's for one point two million. It would be two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every hundred thousand would go up approximately fifteen dollars. Is that right? Fifteen per one hundred. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Now yes. I got to remember the question. <laughs> dispatch. Did we move dispatch in this whole scenario? You moved a lot of stuff. Oh no. This no. is still downstairs. Right. Okay. And well, they're on this floor. But they're on the second yeah. floor here. Yeah. And any mill levy that both stage one and stage two would apply to this will fall over after there's some sort of financial completion. They won't be hanging around. Right. The mill levies. Yeah. Right. It's a judgment levy, so it only um, you only do it until you satisfy what you what you had to do. Okay. And stage two is yet to be determined because we don't know exactly what that's going to be. Correct. But. Okay. On a court levy, and correct me, James, if I'm wrong, we can only do those for three years, can't we? Yes, that's right. And then, so that it has to be paid off in three years. What's What determines that? There's a state statute that says that. Thank you. Um, this is Mr. James Raymond, our civil attorney for the commissioner. Generally, civil attorney. Gen <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he can become uncivil. Yeah. <laughs> The woman thing about the jail. Anybody have a sociological comment that you made about that? Why are these encountering more women? Yeah. It's a great. Well, we just bash out. You, you don't have a stab at it at all. Well, it's not just in Lake County, it's happening all it's over everywhere. the country. Oh, okay. More females are ending up with drug related. To the yeah. core, the core I, things probably. That's what I was expecting to hear. Yeah, well, um, okay, and I'll yield the floor to somebody else while I think up some more questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So, so the bottom line here is we're talking about yet another tax on the property taxpayers of Lake County to pay yes, once sir. again for something more. Have we looked, or are you looking at innovative ways to cut costs, for example? And some of it would be unpleasant because you'd have to get rid of things that people love and want to have, but uh, I don't see how we can continue to keep going back to the well of the property tax. People, You have many people here, fixed incomes, as you all know, people have decided to retire here. They can't keep paying and paying and paying, especially on an unrealized capital gain, uh, which is the increase in value of their property that's happened over the last several years. You're just going to drive out people and we're going to have lots of extremely wealthy people around the lake that are here for all you know like four or five days in the summer who have property properties here uh i don't see how this is sustainable without some sort of property tax revolution is there any other innovative ideas for how to uh get you know for example to, to get the tribal corporation to help with some of these costs have you considered moving all of that 50% of your jail population to the tribal facility or things of, of that nature. Is there any, I mean, because this is the non-innovative solution that we keep going back to, dig into the wallets of the property tax, of the property owners of Lake County. Have you looked at any emergency powers or anything, anything other than just once more going back to the well? Uh, today, we're sending our initial <clears throat> claim to the state of Montana for public block 280 costs. Um, we have, for the last 10 days of May, we withdrew 
our consent from Public Law 280 on May 21st. So from May 21st to May 31st, we have a claim for 57,000 uh, that's going out in the mail today. And then from June 1 to uh, June 31, we have another claim for about 152,000, I believe. Uh, so about 200,000 altogether that we're sending to the Department of Justice. Uh, we're not really expecting to see a check in the mail uh, for those costs, but we feel as part of the process, we need to continue to follow um, to see if there's not a court somewhere that will look favorably upon us and say, yes, state of Montana, you owe Lake County some money, I guess. Another part of the response would be, uh, you know, we just had a discussion this morning about, you know, what do we do with our budget? Uh, are there some offices where we can cut positions? Um, can we freeze the budget? Can we, um, you know, we're, we're looking and discussing and, and trying to find ways, you know, where we can save some money now. I agree. Uh, I don't think property taxpayers can continue to completely fund all the costs of county government. I think there's got to be another source of of money for the counties rather than property taxes. Now, when you take a look, the total amount of property taxes that are collected in the county, and I think it was about forty six million last year. You know, the county gets 17 or 18 percent of that. So our share is not a big piece of the pie. So a lot of the other costs that people see on their property taxes are, you know, other other entities. Have, have you looked at uh, the possibility of shifting? I mean, because I know they've held felons before at the tribal facility. So is there the possibility of moving some of your inmates to that facility as they await further uh, adjudication? I do not know the answer. It's uh, and I can tell you and I know Don will probably have something to say about this, but we look at liability hugely. And when I was sheriff, we looked at trying to hold tribal people in the tribal jail and uh, they didn't meet the standards we did they couldn't um we would have probably been sued if they're if if they're in the tribal jail if they're on public law 280 and they do something it, the county gets sued i mean the tribe doesn't get sued the county does so if if it's mismanaged or there's a problem because they're technically our prop prisoner under public law 280 county's still liable and that's a huge concern for me personally and um, the felonies that the tribe holds are felonies they've charged um, which they they can legally do there's a, a few different felonies they can charge and, and take care of um, so for well, me why is, why is the county sued be, because they're our prisoner well but we're not the county is not in public law 280 we're um, we are still complying with it because right. for the safety of the citizens. Right. We're doing it That's under right. protest. Right. So we still have the authority. If our guys are making the arrests and putting them in jail, they're still our prisoners. Right. Um, I understand that, but I mean, you're not in public law 280, so how are they gonna sue you and make it your responsibility? Well, that's that's very arguable, but I, but those were a lot of the issues at the time. And um, well, and I don't think that's changed any really. I know that we've asked several times over the last several years whether the tribe would hold any of our prisoners there, and they said they will not. I know that uh, the county attorney's office was averaging 700, 650 to 750 felony cases a year. Since they've started shifting some of the more minor felony drug cases, they probably shifted 200 of those down to the tribe. So the tribe is handling that. And so they're holding some of those. 
but under their charges, felony charges. So they are, uh, as far as the 50% in the jail, we would be, we still need to meet the requirements, whether they're tribal members or non tribal members, as far as the space in the jail and the rent. Sure. Um, so we're kind of stuck either way, whether we, so I, I don't know how we can I'm fix it for, and make it. I'm just looking for solutions that don't. You know that that are more innovative than what we're doing because what we do now is we always go back to the property taxpayers of the county and dig in their wallet and then their bank accounts. No matter, it's like a money sickness. There's always going to be more money. Well, maybe there isn't going to be. Maybe Lake County is going to go away and it's going to be uh, distributed between Flathead and Missoula. If we keep going down this route, I don't see how you avoid it if we don't come up with some better solutions and if you know i'm hoping maybe i'll be able to help you with that in the legislature next year but but uh we, it's, we've got to start doing some serious brainstorming well and it's people seem to think that the commissioners don't pay taxes i mean they, they think that we're putting these taxes on everybody else and they don't affect us well that's absolutely wrong uh, I, and, you guys have a and, tough job and i know i appreciate it but but i if i can help you in any way it's some sort of brainstorming on how we do this differently, because I don't see people here on fixed incomes continuously dealing with levies and tax increases that they didn't even vote on. The, the, we the people are not voting on this. It's being imposed. Yes, sir. Uh, what's really sad is the tribe gets well over $100 million from the federal government, state government every year, well over $100 million in grants. They're getting 1.9 billion it's in the water rights settlement. I read in the paper where a Kerr Dam, they're making like 30 million a year. And they can't pump up three million dollars. I mean, it's just insane to me. Well, we have tried everything we can legally try at this point, and we're still looking at options. I mean, there's we're still trying on stuff. We haven't given up. And there's been a lot of time and effort put into it. We did file a lawsuit in state court several years ago over the taxes. And then, uh, Judge Larson at the time uh, told us, which we thought that he would, that we were in the wrong court, state court, that we needed to go to federal court. And getting into federal court is quite expensive. and. Uh, we have not gone down that road yet. Chris? Following, following the conversation here with regard to Public Law 280, if we incur liability for a tribal felon or whoever is in our camp right now because we're out of Public Law 280, that liability is questionable. Is that what I heard you say? Well, I think it's questionable that a judge would say we're out of Public Law 280. The governor never is issued his proclamation, and that was part of what had to be done for us to withdraw. And um, so my perspective is, is unfortunately we're still in it, but we're in it under protest. Okay, so you think we'd still be liable? Oh, I, I totally think we Until we get something out of the governor, which is never going to happen. Or Jim. <laughs> now, the, earlier we mentioned that we thought we might be lucky enough to get the same judge that made the original ruling over public law 280. If this thing had to go, she still maintains jurisdiction over the ruling and the public law 280 filings that were made into the state for re reimbursement, she would probably uh, endorse or go along with, or we would have some sympathy there in the court. Well, what when it comes to courts and what probably should be done and yeah. what happens is quite different quite often. Yeah, I and, understand that. But we, but we have generally, hopefully, a more favorable stance with her in that court than we normally have as Lake County, because we have no credibility as Lake County in the courts. You understand that? I think she's her best shot right now. Okay. We'll put it that well, that's something positive. And the other thing is that you mentioned the percentage associated with the mill, uh, the mill percentage that we get from real estate taxes and the rest of it goes elsewhere. That elsewhere is the state. Where does it go? Uh, most of it, well, about half of it goes to the school districts. 
depending on which but that school district you're in. That's distributed by the state, though, right? No. No. Okay. Comes into the the county is a tax collector. Okay. So those dollars come into the county. We ship the money out to the school districts, the fire districts, senior citizen centers. Um, all the things. Yeah. So what is the remainder after we as a county have done all that? Uh, the percentage, for example. I think it's around 17 or 18 percent. So there's a remainder of 17 or 18 percent that, that the county could probably have some claim over if we could get it out from the legislature. So that's a note to you to, is to get in there and tell the state to give us our money back. Um, okay. Um, Rick Jor is going to ask these questions. The legal fees associated with this settlement that we're talking about here, $190,000 of it was going to the plaintiff's attorneys. Uh, the remainder of, I believe it was 230 some odd thousand and 190. The rest of that is going to an outside attorney that the county hired. And I think uh, that was all agreed to. Rick George is going to ask this question, and I'm just channeling him a little bit right now. <laughs> Who decided all that? And why did we agree to such an exorbitant amount with regard to legal fees, or was that amount exorbitant? And how much pushback was made? in accepting the that agreement to that amount did i did i make that clear enough or should i say sure that? yeah you want to address why mako came in and we're we're covered by mako i understand and montana association of counties their insurance and so they're the ones who actually brought in the outside attorneys because they don't have expertise in staff to handle a case like this so they brought in best they thought they could find at the time to handle it. And um, the price, when you're talking about, I don't remember what the hourly rate was, but it was pretty comparable to what is, what's charged in cases like this. We're talking $300 an hour, $500 an hour, $600 an hour. Uh, you know, I don't remember, but it would, but total, there were three, three attorneys that worked on it, all specializing in different fields. And, um, and I, I honestly can't tell you an hourly rate. I'd have to sit down and figure that out. Um, but anyway, they were hired, and they're the ones who brought them on. And um, unfortunately, now if we insurance is difficult to me. But um, anyway, they're um, they're the ones who brought them on. They're the ones who defended us. So for of the amounts that we spent, 190 for plaintiff's attorney, we spent 30 some odd thousand dollars for the outside attorney. Mako did. Mako did. Uh, does Mako get a cut out of that? No, they pay a percentage of it. They pay a percentage. Yeah. Oh, that's and that the, what you see is what we paid. Okay. Um, and then the, what remainder was there after that, and what did that involve? These are these are Rick George channeled questions. Yeah. So be careful. Do you remember, James, what Mako paid on that? Was it happening? I didn't even understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> and you were glad to see you're, you're working on a bunch of assumptions. I don't know. Okay. And um, I'll ask you. Well, I mean, uh, that, anyway, you need to answer if I understand. Mako question. paid a percentage of it. And what you see in this is what we're paying, what we're required to pay. What I'm asking for is, is an accounting of the, the amount of money that we paid in legal fees and what they were for. That's what I'm asking. All I know is it didn't go in my pocket for a shouting depth to see the nice thing. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 sort of come on. We can we can get that information. Absolutely. Aaron, so, did okay. you have any numbers come I, popping into your just head? what's in the settlement so is right all here, I know. Christopher. Right in the portion nine point two of okay. the settlement. Oh, I need a copy. Of that. So the 132,000 went to the upper seven. That's the uh, that's the law firm that represented it, represented us. Okay, hey, that'll answer my question. Thank you. Yeah. This is a this is a hypothetical question, and I understand that. We put a mill levy out for the voters to vote on, and they turned it down for the jail. Um, in retrospect, is, would that still have been a better situation than we're looking at now with regard to the settlement? 
or is it a toss up? Or do we know? Well, if it would have if it would have passed, I don't know that we'd be having this lawsuit. Yeah. We, I'll we, put it that way. But uh, the fact that it didn't pass, we're doing the best we can now as cheaply as we can. Yeah, I understand that. But would we have been better off with that middle passage? In, in, from the perspective of this lawsuit, I would say there's a really good chance this would not have been filed. And that's the best way I can answer. Okay, thank you. If somebody wanted to pay a big amount every year on their taxes for a new jail instead of a lawsuit, I don't know. But under the circumstances, I don't think, the uh, best I can say is I don't think this lawsuit would be here if the jail would have passed. Yeah, oh, I'm sure of that. Thank you. And I think, in my opinion, I'm not sure how many years it would have taken to build that new facility because yeah. COVID hit. So, you know, this lawsuit that uh, these inmates brought, you know, I think they were alleging some of these um, inadequacies happened, you know, five or six years ago. So there may have still been grounds for this lawsuit even though we were in a new facility. Maybe, I, I, I don't know. So we may have been doing both of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. The only other thing I would add is <clears throat> the legislation that authorized you guys to withdraw, which was a smart move, doesn't say the governor will sign that when he gets around to it or if he happens to be happy with it. It says he shall sign it. So he's in violation mm -hmm. of the legislation that he signed passed by both the house and the senate in montana so he's a violator in this because he doesn't have it doesn't say if you want to sign it it says shall so they're playing a technical game with you of not receiving it the other part of that is when it comes to the school commitment of the funds that you guys have to spend there how much of that is obligated by statute or do, is there flexibility in there do you know? I think we have to send to the schools whatever, you know, whatever they levy. So the schools come to the county superintendent of schools and they submit their budgets. This is how much money we need. I think there's nine funds that they have. But so then the county superintendent of school brings those budgets to us. And we sign off on them saying that we agreed to collect this much money and then we'll disperse it to you as it comes in. So it's an agreement then. So in other words, you might almost have a line item veto capability on some of those items or are it committed by law that you must provide those funds? That's, that's the heart of my question. Yeah, well, when I was superintendent of schools, I brought him in and Commissioner Mike Hutchins says, I don't think it makes any difference whether we sign off on them as commissioners or not. So I think even a few years, he didn't even sign them and the budgets were still put on people's tax bills. So I don't, to answer your question, I don't think we can go to the Polson School District and say, you're asking for too much money, uh, you know, we're not going to approve your budget. You have no authority to I don't think so. So it is all committed by law then. Yeah, that's, I wouldn't swear to that, Tracy, but that's my understanding. Well, I think the best information is what you started with. It's it's just an agreement that we will collect the money that you're asking for. And it doesn't give us any authority to say it's right or wrong or not. It's just an agreement to collect it. Financial distributor. And even, I don't think the superintendent of schools can even um say you know i'm not going to sign off on this i think they can say that but i don't think it impacts what the schools can actually levy because i had the school transportation and the school depreciation budgets are permissive levies and i argued for years as superintendent of schools that there needed to be some control over these permissive levies, because schools were using uh, transportation funds, monies, which are permissive, 
uh, to build parking lots, uh, to buy activity buses, to pay salaries, and uh, I'm, I'm insinuating that might be something we have to look at. Yeah, because uh, because there are a huge chunk of the budget. Yes, and, they are. and uh, like I said, people can't keep paying. It, and, and the only way to control the schools and their levies is to make them put their levies on a regular ballot. Because is these, these in between levies mm -hmm. that get voted on are eight percent true. If you say you want to turn trash cans upside down instead of right side up, you can probably get it approved on a non uh, scheduled election for legislation. So that's part of the problem we see right there. <laughs> we got to stop these non scheduled ballot initiatives going out and getting voted on because no one looks at them and they make it through almost every time. It's a really bad situation. Uh, yeah, I don't want to beat up on the schools, but, um, you know, they. Right now, the schools are beating up on the taxpayer. They have a lot of latitude of yeah. how they put their budgets together. Another thing, like St. Ignatius School District which Mr. Stanley resides in, <laughs> they, uh, their levies say there's a, uh, based on the taxable value of your district, there's a maximum number of mills that you can levy, but the school districts do not have to abide by that. So the San Ignatius School District, I don't know what the taxable value of their district was, back um, five, six, seven, eight years ago with their levy, but they far exceeded what uh, somebody else, some other district could have levied because the taxable value of the district was so, you know, insignificant, really. Um, so there, there's a lot of uh, power that school districts have that, other entities can't uh, access. And again, I'm not trying to beat up on the schools, but. Um, One last other unrelated situation you say, and as Tracy may say and claim, and if he's correct, that the governor shall sign off on public law 280, and he won't, then we may have to have legislators talk to Austin Knutson to get him to sue the damn governor. It says shall. The word is S H A L L. He yeah, Austin Knutson needs to do his job and sue the damn governor. But Representative Reed is of the opinion that the legislature has to withdraw us from public poetry. So, you can see, I think. Wise, but he's talking about the state, not the county. Yeah. He's talking about the state. Because the. To be talking about. Right. Well, if you look at the law, the state already gave us permission to get out. Yeah, they the did. county's got authority yeah. by statute, which this governor signed. So the county can get out. The state is a, has an obligation, and even the judge agreed with you that, uh, when you talked to him before. That she, the uh, judge, agreed that this is a state obligation. Fertile ground for lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah. Any more public comment? So we'll close the public comment and turn back over to the commissioners. We also did get some written public comment. Mr. George submitted a email, JR Ventures and Mike. Mike Farmer, yep. Mike Farmer. The letter from JR, he requested that it be read in this meeting. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> County commissioners, you need to figure out what percentage of Dale jail days in the last five years have been jail days of tribal members. Say it's 60%. You should then demand that the CSKT contribute 60% to any jail related expansion expenses. Energy Keepers has been making over 30 million a year on average from Kerr Dam and pay zero property taxes. They, the tribe in parentheses, have the money and it should be your job to get them to pay their fair share. I'm tired of you guys pussyfooting around the tribe and not being aggressive enough. 
How about a few articles in the paper concerning the tribe's failure to help pay, especially since they've refused to pay taxes on the dam? Do more, do more to put the pressure on. Do your job. Make it public knowledge over and over and keep it up. That's part of what we are paying you for. We are not getting your money's worth. I wonder what percentage of Lake County taxpayers know that Energy Keepers has refused to pay property taxes. I bet it is less than 30%. Get on your bully pulpits and put the pressure on in various ways. I'm tired of all the free CSKT lunches that have added up to millions of dollars paid for by Lake County taxpayers. I'm pissed and so are the people that know what's going on. Thank you, JR. Who is JR? Uh, if I see him on the street, I can point him out. <laughs> I think it's JR Ventures, I'm not sure. Now the other email said, they're entered into the record, um, the entirety of the email. So, public comment is closed. Open it back up to commissioner comment and a motion at some point. Uh, I guess I'll start with motion, get us due to discussion, but I will make a motion that we approve resolution 24-25. So we have a motion to approve the resolution of intent 24-25 to impose a special levy and borrow money. Can I just really quickly, and we already passed the resolution of intent, so you're going to approve the actual resolution. Okay. So this is not the resolution of intention. We already passed the resolution of intention, and that's why we're here today. Mm. Good thing you have her around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just reading from yeah, I just, George's letter, letter where yeah. it says resolution of intent. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. To approve resolution 24 25. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to comment, like on, on JR's letter, we, we have tried to talk to the tribe for funding in numerous ways. Um, we've tried with the state, we've tried to be very frugal. Um, I don't like this stuff any more than anyone else does, but I'm put in a position that I'm supposed to represent the county to the best of my ability to do what's right. And um, I, I agree with this. Uh, Tracy, you know, mills or levies that are put in that you don't vote on, that those leave a bad taste in your mouth. And I think legislature should look at how levies are done and passed and what percentage it takes to pass one and things like that. But what we're doing today is we're working under the laws we have based on the efforts we've put in. And that's why I have uh, voted to, I mean, made the motion to pass it. I do not like permissive levies, period. Um, I'm gonna vote for this one uh, only because it has a sunset on it. If it did not have a sunset, I would not uh, vote for it. I believe not only permissive levies, but any levies that are out there uh, that we approve should have a sunset so people can look back and say, yeah, we got our money's worth. The county collected the money and you put it to good use. And uh, so if we, you want money for additional years, put another levy out there for us to vote on. Could I just make one yes. comment? You know, I go back to when I was sheriff a lot. And when I was sheriff, there were people that ended up in jail that didn't belong there. But because they couldn't make their bond or whatever the issue, that's where they were at. And I always, I had two young daughters. And I always thought, what, what would I feel like if one of those daughters got arrested and were put in this jail and they couldn't bond out and you knew they were innocent and they they end up being innocent or the chargers are dropped, whatever. You want them to be treated right. You want them to have safe conditions. You want them to have 
the food that it, you wanted to be taken care of and protected. And there's a huge responsibility in that. And I just always weigh those kind of things in my mind when things like this come up, when it deals with the jail, so. So we'll call for a question. All in favor of the motion to approve resolution 24-25 signify by aye. 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 Motion carries. Hearing is adjourned. Thank you.